Three-Dimensional Coordinate Systems, Level 8. In the previous video, we started going over basic examples that require the use of the equation of a sphere. Now we will continue going over slightly more challenging examples. Let's go over an example where the equation of the sphere is not written in standard form. Show that the equation represents a sphere and find its center and radius. This problem is similar to the problems that you encountered in your pre-calculus class, especially when you were learning about conic sections. Because of the fact that these equations contain a quadratic term, also known as a power function of degree 2, we need to complete the square in order to obtain the binomial squared characteristic of an equation of a sphere. The first step in completing the square is to collect like terms and move the constants to one side of the equation, with the rest of the terms on the other side of the equation. For this problem, this has been taken care for us. Next, we want to group together the terms that contain the same variable. In this case, we group together x squared and 4x. Notice that y squared is the only term that does not have a corresponding linear term, so there's no need to complete the square on this variable. For the last variable, we go ahead and group together z squared and negative 8z. Next, we need to make sure that each of the quadratic terms has a coefficient of 1. Looking at the quadratic term, we see that all three of them have a coefficient of 1, so there's no need to factor anything out. Next, we go ahead and take the coefficient of the linear term from each group and divide it by 2, and square it, making sure we add the result to each respective group and on the other side of the equation. Doing that, we obtain the following. The purpose of completing the square is to obtain a perfect square trinomial and factor it as a binomial squared. In this case, each perfect square trinomial factors into the following binomials. Notice that the term that is added or subtracted in the binomial is actually the square root of the constant term we added. We also keep the sign of the linear term. Finally, we simplify the right side of the equation, obtaining the standard equation of a sphere, which is equal to the quantity x plus 2 squared plus y squared plus the quantity z minus 4 squared equals 25. The center of the sphere has coordinates equal to h, k, and l. In this case, the center has coordinates negative 2, 0, and 4. Remember that the value of h, k, and l have opposite signs than the ones expressed in the equation. Notice that y squared does not have a k term. This means that the value of k is 0. Many students forget this. If there's no term being added or subtracted, this means that the value for that coordinate is 0. Here we also have to be careful with the radius. The number expressed in the equation is r squared. So to find the value of r, we need to take the square root of this expression. So the square root of 25 is 5. The radius of this sphere is actually 5, not 25. All right, let's try the next example. Show that the equation represents a sphere and find its center and radius. All right, similar to the previous example, let's go ahead and move all the terms with variables on one side, leaving the constant on the other side of the equation. So we subtract 8x, add 24z, and subtract 2y from both sides of the equation. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Next, we go ahead and group the terms with the same variables. Doing that, we have the following. Next, we need the coefficient of the quadratic term to be equal to 1. So we go ahead and factor out 2 from each grouping. Alternatively, since each grouping has a factor of 2, we can go ahead and divide every single grouping, including the constant, by 2, as follows. Next, it's just a matter of completing the square for each variable. So we go ahead and take the coefficient of each of the variable's linear term and divide it by 2 and squaring the result, making sure we add this value to both sides of the equation. One term is added to its respective grouping, and the other is added to the constant on the right side of the equation. Next, we go ahead and factor each of the perfect squared trinomials into a binomial squared. We also need to simplify the constants on the right side of the equation. Doing that, we obtain the following equation of a sphere. The quantity x minus 2 squared plus the quantity y minus 1 half squared plus the quantity z plus 6 squared equals 163 over 4. Looking at the equation, we see that the coordinates of the center is equal to 2, 1 half, and negative 6, and the radius is equal to the square root of 163 over 2. Remember, to obtain the radius, we need to take the square root of the number expressed in the equation, since it actually represents r squared, not r. 
All right, let's go over the final example. Find the equations of the spheres with sensor 2, negative 3, 6 that touch the xy plane, the yz plane, and the xz plane. In this problem, we are asked to find the equation of the sphere with sensor 2, negative 3, and 6 that touches each of the coordinate planes. We already have the center of the sphere. All that is left to find is the radius of the sphere. This means that we need an additional point so we can use the distance formula in three dimensions. The second point we need is that point where the sphere touches each of the coordinate planes. In essence, the point where the sphere touches the coordinate plane is called the tangent point. In this case, the coordinate planes will be the tangent planes to this sphere. Let's first find the tangent point that is formed with the xy plane. Here we have the center. Let's label it as point C. We want to find a point on the xy plane that is tangent to a sphere with a given center. Let's label this point as point T. Recall from elementary geometry that a line tangent to a point on a circle is perpendicular to the radius at that point of tangency. In the same manner, a plane that is tangent to a sphere is perpendicular to the radius of the sphere at that point of tangency. This means that we can draw a line segment from the point of tangency on the xy plane to the center of the sphere. And this line segment is essentially the radius of the sphere. Notice that the point of tangency is actually the projection of point C onto the xy plane. Recall from the previous videos that the point projected onto the plane has the same x and y coordinate of the point being projected. In this case, point T has the same x and y coordinates as point C. In addition, since this point is located on the xy plane, its z coordinate is equal to zero. Now that we have the coordinate of point T and C, let's use the distance formula to find the radius. Using point T as point 1 and the center as point 2, we go ahead and find the difference of each of the point's coordinates. Doing that and squaring the expression, we obtain the following. Then we go ahead and simplify the expression, obtaining the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So the equation of the sphere with center 2, negative 3, 6 that touches the xy plane is equal to the quantity x minus 2 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared plus the quantity z minus 6 squared equals 36. Notice that since both points t and c share the same x and y coordinates, their difference reduced to zero, and the distance was solely equal to the difference of the point's z coordinates. So all we had to do is count how many units from the center we need to move to reach the xy plane in a z direction. This works because the coordinate planes are perpendicular to one of the coordinate axes. The radius of the sphere touches the plane in the direction of a single axis, as opposed to two or more axes. In the same manner, the equation of a sphere with the same center that touches the yz plane can be found in the same way. Since the plane is perpendicular to the radius of the sphere, all we have to do is count how many units from the center do we need to move to reach the yz plane. In this case, we need to move two units in the positive x direction. Notice that this is the same as the x coordinate of the center. But keep in mind that this will not always be the case. We're trying to find the distance from the center to the yz plane. Since the x coordinate of any point on this plane is 0, we are actually finding the distance from 2 to 0, which is just equal to 2. So the equation that touches this plane is the quantity x minus 2 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared plus the quantity z minus 6 squared equals 4. Finally, the equation of a sphere that touches the xz plane can be found by counting the distance from the center to the xz plane, since it's also perpendicular to the radius of the sphere. In this case, we need to count the distance along the y-axis, which is just equal to 3. So the equation of the sphere would be equal to the quantity x minus 2 squared plus the quantity y plus 3 squared plus the quantity z minus 6 squared equals 9. Keep in mind that all we had to do is to count the distance from the plane to the center of the sphere. In these examples, because the planes were perpendicular to one of the coordinate axes, the problem reduces to just counting the distance from the center to the coordinate plane along a single axis. If the plane were to be slanted or tilted, then we would be moving along two or more axes. We will go over these types of examples in a much later video. All right. In our next video, we will go ahead and cover two final examples that require the use of the equation of a sphere.